welcome to the Character Designer's Secret Weapon. My name is Steven Silver and my website, if you want to see more of my artwork, is silvertoons.com. So what is the Character Designer's Secret Weapon? It is this thing. And what is this thing you ask? This is a ratio based on the Fibonacci system, which is then again based on the golden section, which you may have heard by, which came from a Greek philosopher by the name of Euclid. Um, but Fibonacci had created this whole sequence and started to, to understand how these ideal proportions were used. So the Fibonacci sequence and the golden section, what it's about is a ratio. And that ratio is simply this. It breaks down into the 1 to 1.618. And that is a common thing used in many design um, buildings and just architecture and just uh, cabinetry. Whatever you want to do, it's really a great uh, system. So I've start, I started using this system many years ago to help me with my actual character designing, trying to help me get better proportions, more ideal proportions, beautiful proportions, harmonious proportions is what I was looking for. So how this mean is typically broken up, if you were to just take a square like this and then you just find that center line straight down the middle, okay, and I find that, then the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to start just to take this angle and show it move it over in this direction here so it almost feels like that's dropping over to this angle and you create like an arc okay so it's more of a natural arc you're going to find this ratio and it breaks down into this golden rectangle shape so now this is what we're playing with is the one to 1.618 okay so let me show you how I'm going to use this tool today on many different aspects of design on bugs on people and how I'm actually going to design it myself um, this is available I'm making them and selling them on the site that you listed see listed below here so feel free to check it out and uh, purchase one if you'd like let me show you some things now Okay, first thing I want to do is just explain this to you just a little bit why I use this tool all the time because I design based on nature. I really do. And it's through that observation and learning and researching that I start to see just in nature what we find to be beautiful or the patterns that we see keep repeating these same shapes over and over again and that's what I've discovered. So let's see how it works on a actual bug here. If we take this little bug here and I take my calipers and I can go either way on them uh, through here I can start to see that right here this ratio um, is right there in this uh, bug. How we start to see that broken up through there and the miracle is when you start to rotate it or switch it or just move it up into this bug into different areas you're going to start to see that this ratio is the exact same uh, ratio going on between this bug between uh, the tip right here tip right here and where this is okay so we start to see that exact same ratio again all right we can see it in this bug here if we start to look at this and we look from the bottom of this bug right here and we find it going again right here and this is where we start to see that ratio broken into shape just perfectly it's just perfect and then we do it again i'm going to move these calipers down just squeeze them just a little bit and look what happens again so now what we're playing with is small medium and large and that's what we really build design on and because we're so used to seeing it in the human face and everywhere we look in trees and animals that we can see it in these things let's look at this bee same thing, look at these patterns that are happening, that golden ratio, perfect. We all of a sudden take it to this B right here on this face right there, just perfect. It's just really just ideal when you start to use these things and see what really happens, okay? Let's go ahead and look at the, the human face. 
all right? How does it apply in the human face? Well, one way that we can start to see it and apply this proportion is a beautiful proportion. If we were to split up on a beautiful face here, and it works with men too, look at that proportion from where the top of the brow is right here, okay? To, or the top of the nose bridge to the bottom of the chin to where the forehead is there. It's just perfect. And that's the way if you're going to start designing and drawing people, you can start to draw them in that facet too. Look how it works with the mouth. If I just take my 1.618 and I just hold it across right there, that proportion in a typical face when people are sculpting and beauty and surgeons and everywhere else, we can see that one ratio is from one corner of the nose to the next. I mean, it's just, it's just flawless. It's just brilliant. And then we can take this and look what happens if I just take these calipers again and I put them at the 1.618 ratio of the corners of the mouth. Look where it lines up, right there at the edge of the face, that one ratio onto the side there. So maybe you're working on portraits. Maybe you're working on a cartoon character character for a comic book, a character design. And this is where these calipers can really just start to help you. There's also something um, interesting to notice if I were just to take uh, these calipers from this edge to this edge, just as a measuring tool. Okay, so I can start to say from, let's just say from the, where the middle of my lips right there to, the, to that same place, to the top of my nose, look at the size right there. It's the exact same. It's even up to my hairline right through here. It matches. And then right down there to where the mouth is. It matches. And so this is a, just a really beautiful way just to see how it really applies, okay? Let me show you something else where it works. Let's look at the, the human body here, all right? So looking at the human body, when we look at the whole body in position, from here if it's just a straight on. Now the minute you got to understand when things start turning in angles and they start moving in different directions, you're not going to maintain the exact same proportion. So it's easier to understand it when things are a lot flatter just to get a, at least a ballpark range and understanding. But look what happens if I take from the bottom of my feet right there to the, where my navel is to the top of my head. Perfect proportion of 1 to 1.618 through there, so it's really great. Look what happens if I reduce that in size too, and I go from the top of my head to the bottom of my chin to my navel. Perfect proportion, the 1 to 1.618, just really great. Look what happens if we go from the bottom of the rib cage, okay, to the knee. Let me just flip this around, bottom of the rib cage right there to the knee to where the ankle is. All right, so perfect proportion. If I say, hey, I, I got to try to get those proportions right, and it works too on the male, if I'm doing it on the male from the bottom of the rib cage, another area we start to see it. Look what happens here when we go from the center of the arm to that wrist right there, and we do something like this. Oh, let me just kind of switch it to make that just a little bit more ideal there for you. You can see that perfect proportion from where that uh, where your elbow is going to be to the rest of your hand. Also, you see it in your fingers and your hand. If I go from this knuckle to this knuckle to there, all those knuckles line up perfectly. And then if I reduce that proportion from this knuckle to that knuckle to the edge of my finger, perfect proportion again. So this 1 to 1.618 ratio is just works really, really well. And this is why I use it and it's my secret weapon for character designing. Let's look at even buildings here where it's just used way back at the Parthenon where we can see the golden uh, mean is just used all throughout when we're just breaking up from the way the, the pillars, from the bottom of the pillars to the top right there, okay? Um, and it's even broken up small as you can see through here. It's used as Statue of Liberty. It was used just when we start just to think about that if we're taking from the very top of the Statue of Liberty through there just to the bottom through here, all right? So I'm playing with that same proportion from the pedestal that's holding it up to that breaks up that shape. We can also see it, My these are a little bit too big, but we can see it right here too, the way that this whole window is broken up with that golden section. And also with the Eiffel Tower, if we just start to look at the whole Eiffel Tower. Now granted, this is at slightly at a little bit of an angle, so it's not gonna be exact, exact, but from this part, this long part right here to the short part is that golden mean and same again if we were to just flip this and do from the bottom of the ground, um, actually let me see here, it's from the bottom of the ground 
to about right there. Again, just keep in mind that if you look at one that's a little bit more flat, it's gonna be a lot more perfect and represent that. So these are just really great examples of how using um, the golden mean is going to help you. What happens is it becomes intuitive, okay? Eventually it becomes so intuitive that you don't have to use it all the time, but it's that awareness. I personally still use it from time to time just to double check and it's not that that little bit's gonna make such a huge difference, but it's that ballpark range that I'm really looking for. So when I designed Kim Possible and just thinking about her when I was doing the final cleanup, this is what I'm gonna think about. I'm breaking up that shape. You see how I split up the hair to that face right here? You see how if I just flip this this direction from the amount of the midriff to the top of her shirt, so we got that black against that lighter area through there. So it works in these different areas as you're working throughout the design, and it's important just to keep uh, those in mind, okay? There's also sections where I could break up and think about how that glove area, that whole arm from there, exposing that lighter area through there is really going to um, carry through. Let's go ahead and take a look at Rufus doing the exact same thing, just playing with this golden mean proportion where I just want to go from the bottom of him to the top of his head and that's what I'm playing with. So what it's trying to do inevitably is just stop me from drawing things and just making things so even. I've coined this term and I call it avoiding the ladder. And that's something what you just want to avoid in your design so you don't make everything just feel so ordinary and so um, it becomes almost too rhythmical when it's not supposed to be it. That's not your goal because we want to have a lot more versatility. Let's look at some other uh, designs here, okay? Let's take a look at Ed Benedict who created the famous Flintstones, okay? So just looking and we can just take some of these, even these different proportions and we can start to see if I were just to take, let me see here, I'm going to go... Uh, what's the longest part right there? Okay, so if I'm going to go from the bottom of his foot, so I start from the bottom of his body, and then I go right up to where his head is to here, we're broken up, that exact same you know, proportion. You, was Ed Benedict, did he have these calibers? No, he understood it because it's design and design in nature, and when you understand that, and that's what makes good designers, good designers and other people not, not that they're using these tools, necessarily some of them are I happen to know some of them do but you just want to make sure that you're maintaining those proportions and how else can those proportions work look if I flip it this way from where my leg is from my head right here to right here to right here I'm playing around with that golden mean again so inevitably I'm almost have small medium large shapes look how else you can apply it to where it works what if we go this way and we play it look what is done here from the back of the head to where that is to where the nose is, you're playing with that. That way, I'm not inevitably just drawing Fred through here, making his nose way out there too. Thereby, what I'm doing is making that ladder. I'm making it too um, even and centered, so I don't want to do that. Tom Orb, another brilliant, brilliant designer. You've known him for from the night from the Disney days, designing so many um, shows and including Sleeping Beauty. But look how he's broken it up. Okay, look at that beautiful golden mean section that's happening in the design. You can see it within the hair. You can see it within this bow tie here. Uh, we can see as we start just to, you know just even break up these different um, shapes. I can just start playing around with it and see you know, where this um, almost just takes me with different designs through here. If I'm just playing even with uh, that proportion from the top there to the bottom there. So we get once again playing with nice equal distances, okay? Tom Orb again, let's look at this. If we almost like take, um, which is beautiful, from the bottom of that straight foot there to the top right here. So we're breaking up those proportions nicely. Um, you can pretty much, you know, it's, it's a rough estimate. It's not exact, but if I just did from the, the top of the head here um, to the bottom, I'm almost playing, you know, it's slide again. He didn't have this with him, these calibers with him. Um, but that idea is there. When I even look at this from the side of the head to where that break is for his nose, then we can start to see where that nose is, that nose shape. Um, you know, what else can we almost see through here? I think from the, look at from the... Um, the side of his head right here to where this is and going this way, we're breaking up those proportions. And it once again becomes these ideal proportions. Um, a friend of mine who's no longer with us, the great Harold Sieperman, 
uh, was another guy who I truly admired his artwork and you can see that you know he would use calipers and just using these different proportions and we can see if I'm just gonna break this up from here you know roughly um, I can get that almost ideal proportion through there. We can start to see how he's breaking up those shapes in his design. We can almost even see it from here, from the corner of where the mouth is right here, okay, to the edge of the head. So now we're breaking up that proportion to say I'm going to pull my smile all the way out. So you can see how that golden mean can come in so handy. Once again, I have these available. I have them specially made. Um, you can usually find them. Uh, some people are selling them on uh, eBay or Etsy, but you'll find them for about $25 or so plus shipping. Um, these are from me, Silver. I'll even sign it for you and send it to you for just $10. So if you're interested, I'm going to show you how I actually use it now designing a character. Oh, I just had to add one more thing here, just Ronald Searle, another one of my heroes, favorite artists, but I know he wasn't whipping these things out, but he was a designer, and look at those beautiful proportions that he's just sort of nailing as he's working on this. Look how you even take a design like this from the bottom of the feet all the way to that shirt, to where the top of the shirt is, and we can see that beautiful proportion there, so it's still there. Look what happens when we mix it and flip it and go in this direction from taking the the whole head right there to the bottom. So we're breaking up that golden mean proportion. So uh, it works, it works, and it's a beautiful thing. So maybe I'm going to be designing someone. Um, and the thing is always just to sort of get your idea out. That's the most important is think about who your character is, what your idea of your character is as you're starting just to draw this person in. So I may say, you know, I want this guy... Um, you know, it's going to have sort of long hair and just playing with proportions here. I just want to get things really loose and tied in. So I'm just trying to find the feeling of my character because that's the most important thing is try to find that, that feeling um, as you're working on this guy. Let's, uh, let's go with that, okay? So now where can I use my golden mean and start looking at things? Well, just to add and what I'm really even just thinking about is maybe from the bottom of his head right there to where the bottom of his pants and maybe I'm going to pull his shorts up through here now. So now that's going to be a landmark for my shorts. So I'm just breaking that up just to make it feel possibly just a little bit more ideal. What if I flip it now and I do the opposite? So now I just want to take it from the pants right there, okay, to where the bottom of his foot is. So maybe I want to bring his foot. Again, this is just an ideal thing, not that it's a, it's a great weapon to have on your side, but um, I don't want to have you think that if you don't do it this way that all, all, your, all your drawings are going to fail. That's not what I'm trying to say. I just want to let you know how it can apply to the character design, okay? Maybe something here I might think about, where do I want to put in relationship to the rest of this body his, his, his pecs right there? So now I might even split it up here. So now I'm going to throw his pecs in the design through there, all right? So now I've broken up those proportions. Um, through here, I'm even just doing, yeah, I'm just doing it through there. That's where my pec's going to be, you know, considering that. All right, so now I'm going to have the, the rest of my guy, and I can just start to place in his hand there. I'm going to place this guy's hand on the side. Okay, so here we are just sort of roughing this guy out, because that's what we want to do is just try to, you know, rough it out. Now, same thing here. Maybe this guy's got a goatee on him. Well, what if I do something like this where I just take and I say his goatee is going to be there from the top of his head. That might be just a great place to, you know, to sort of throw that. Okay. Um, what about if I want to vary that? I might, might even say from, from this point, uh, let me see here. I want to maybe, well, I'm breaking that up enough. Maybe what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to move his uh, nose, might even break his nose all the way to the top there and put his eyes you know, up here, just to create just a little bit more uh, variety. Okay, so now I'm, now I'm sort of taking that same sort of idea of that golden mean. I've just split that from where his nose is and his head. Okay, and then I can come in and add the rest of my design. Okay, so this is how I'm just starting just to think about what that may be. And then we can add all the bells and whistles. If I want to add little hairs on him and all this other stuff afterwards, you know, that's great. But now I got somewhat, you know, of an ideal proportion. 
All right, so that's just, you know, one way of doing it because what if I all of a sudden decide, you know, I'm going to take a guy that maybe looks like this now, you know, it becomes something like this. And I want to get this guy and I'm thinking about his actual proportions through here, but I want to make him just a, a lot skinnier. What if I decide to throw this up here like that and say, sure, it's going to be there. Now I've broken my character into three different parts there, which become more into that golden uh, mean section. And then from here, I can start pulling all my different elements. So maybe I just kind of want to switch that to there. Let me see. I'm going to take that and I'm going to use that measurement. So that's where the bottom of his pants are going to be. I'm going to put his feet there. Okay, maybe up here. Uh, well, it's a little bit small, but I kind of know. This is where I got to eyeball it. And maybe, again, I'm going to stick his, his chest right there. Then I'm going to pull this guy's arms down. Put his arms through there. All right. And then uh, maybe his face here. What I want to do is I'm going to get that goatee just a lot bigger now. Maybe I'm going to have his eyes over here. So now I got this guy's goatee over here. I'm going to take this guy's eyes and put them over here like this. All right. Might even split that up, you know, so I just start splitting things up. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm avoiding the ladder. So it's awesome. It's awesome. And even where, yeah, where those eyes are from, you know, there to there, that feels good. And then we got his hair coming down. We've got his eyeballs. All right. And then I put his hand on the other side. All right. So this becomes just the generalization of how I'm going to start building up my characters and having fun. All right. So that's it. This is um, just the uh, golden section gauge and um, I'm selling them through the website listed. Just $10 plus shipping to anywhere in the world. Um, and I'll sign it for you. And it's if you're interested, yeah, just check it out. It's really cool. It works. It's a beautiful thing. And that's it. Have a great one. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Oh, no, no.